Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. It's rapid fire time where you ask and we answer with Dr. Shabir Ali. So let's get right to it. Welcome to the show, Dr. Shabir. Pleasure to be on. So we're doing rapid fire Q&A. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the first question is from a viewer um, asking, uh, you know, why are we surprised when, um, when non-Muslims commit crimes, or sorry, Muslims commit crimes in the name of Islam? And the viewer is saying, does Islam really teach people to be good citizens? Yes, of course. Uh, Islam does teach people to be good citizens. That's what the whole, the whole you know, the Islam in a nutshell, that, that's what it is. And many religions, of course, could be boiled down to the same uh, basic principle, just uh, serve God and, and be good to humankind. Uh, in terms of uh, Islam, the Quran it, it, it gives us many of the ethical teachings which are um, uh, already known from the Bible. Uh, you shouldn't lie, you shouldn't steal, you shouldn't commit adultery, you shouldn't um, uh, bear false testimony, and so on. Uh, these are commandments which are known from the Bible. They are repeated in the Quran, and uh, much more is, is found in the Quran. Um, so the, indeed, we are shocked when uh, Muslims uh, commit violent acts uh, in the name of Islam, because we know that this is not Islam. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes they twist certain verses of the Quran out of context, and they use it to justify their violence against innocent and civilians, uh, but we decry their acts and, and we show that in fact they are misinterpreting the Quran and, and misusing uh, our faith. A lot of violence that is being committed in the world has nothing to do with, uh, with faith. In fact, uh, they, they are done by people who have uh, not uh, maintained faith. And uh, when we look at uh, violent acts in America, for example, the recent school shooting uh, where a, you know, a, a gunman went into a Florida school and killed 17 and wounded some 13 others, uh, we, we don't know the full story behind this, uh, but we know that he was expelled from that school. So sometimes it's a disgruntled student, a disgruntled uh, employee, uh, or in the case of the Vegas shooting, God knows what was in his mind. Why, why did he go up to a 32nd uh, floor uh, hotel room and shoot down, uh, killing uh, 80 uh, two persons in that one incident. Uh, so a, a lot of violence, and uh, uh, we can say the, the world's worst nightmare, uh, is really committed not by people of faith, but people who have actually no connection with mm -hmm. faith. Okay. Uh, the next question is, is the, a viewer is asking, is there intercession in Islam? Um, now this is a tricky question because it, traditional Muslim uh, scholarship has actually accepted that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, will intercede uh, for his followers. And uh, not only that, but uh, maybe previous prophets will intercede for their uh, followers as, as well. Uh, but the, the Quran says that there is no um, intercession except with the permission of God. So uh, what, uh, putting it all together, it seems that the best way uh, forward is to think that God will honor certain individuals by giving them a chance to intercede. But this intercession will not be uh, for the purpose of changing the mind of God. God it, it's, it's a way of honoring uh, a, a person by giving him that status of allowing him to put in the word for somebody else, mm -hmm. whereas that somebody else God would have had mercy on anyhow. You know, we can put it in this way. If, if let's say the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would beg God, God, please, you know, this is a follower of mine. Please uh, don't send my follower to hell. Take him into paradise. And God says, yeah, sure, I'll take your follower with you into paradise. Now, it's not a case that God changed his mind. It's, it's a case that God did not yet announce uh, his mercy for this individual. And he gave the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that honor to be able to say, God, please let me put in a word for my comrade here. Uh, so the, in, in the bottom line of this is that Muslims should not depend on someone else to intercede for them. Muslims should have a close and personal relationship with God. They should reach out to God without any mediators, asking God for the forgiveness of their sins and asking God uh, to admit them into paradise and to save them from hell. Uh, one final question a viewer is asking, is my sister allowed to wear shorts in front of me? Well, if the sister is of age, uh, normally, of course, we know that the Muslim woman is uh, required to cover all of her body. I think the Muslim classical scholarship says, except for the face and hands when in public. Now, with family members, one might wear a house dress, which is a little bit more revealing, but still, there are limits even within the family. And uh, in most uh, Muslim cultures, it will be thought that a, a girl uh, of, of age wearing shorts 
even in the presence of her brothers, would be uh, crossing a line there. But of course, the rule about this is not so very strict. It depends on what families know to be safe and decent within changing cultures. Perfect. Thank you very much, Dr. Schreer. You're welcome. Hey, YouTube. We hope you benefited from this video. If you liked it, or if you didn't, let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, check out some of our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.